Hello and welcome to the 16th session of the Introductory Biostatistics Distance Learning Course. Today um, we're going to have a demonstration of how to do analysis of proportions using Stata. Um, so luckily we're able to return to the SEPO data set which we've been using all along um, with the exception of the Stata lab corresponding to non-parametric tests and the reason again for that was because we needed matched pairs, um, a design with matched pairs to be able to illustrate one of the Wilcoxon tests and we didn't have any matched pairs in the SEPO data set. But fortunately we do have some proportions in the SEPO data set so we will be using it again um, for purposes of illustration. Okay, so before we look at any sort of data, again, we can go through our seven steps of hypothesis testing and we can conduct the um, first couple steps of, um, of the hypothesis testing procedure without getting to the data first, okay? So um, what we're going to be trying to assess um, is whether um, there is a difference in the proportion of patients who died on the study um, for uh, between men and women. Okay, so if there's a difference in the proportion of patients who died on the study between men and women. Okay, um, and so as we usually do, our our first step of hypothesis testing is going to be to write out the null hypothesis. Okay, so in this case. Uh, we're going to say the probability of death um, for females on the study is equal to the probability of death for males on the study. Okay? And so Naturally, the alternative hypothesis is going to be uh, that these probabilities are not equal. And remember that an alternative way of writing the same null hypothesis is to say that the probability of death in females minus the probability of death in males is equal to zero. Okay? So those are two equivalent ways of writing the null and alternative hypotheses. Obviously the alternative hypothesis here is one minus the other is not equal to zero. Okay? So these are equivalent. Then in step two, step two is one of the, the most important steps. We want to state the type of data that we're working with so in this particular example, we have a dichotomous outcome, dichotomous or binary outcome, which is, did the patient die on the study, yes or no? Um, and similarly, we have a dichotomous predictor or covariate. Um, or explanatory variable. Those words all mean the same thing, um, specifically gender. So um, our dichotomous outcome, did you die on the study? Yes, no. Dichotomous predictor um, is the patient male or female. Okay. And then in step three we want to mention the appropriate type of statistical test that we want to conduct. So for this setup with a dichotomous outcome and dichotomous predictor, we want to use a two-sample um, test of proportion. Okay? So again, we were able to conduct these first three steps um, out of the seven steps of hypothesis testing before even getting to Stata, okay? So, but in the fourth step, to complete the fourth, fifth, and so on, the, the other steps we're going to need to first conduct the analysis in Stata. So let's do that now, okay? 
So how can I conduct this two sample test of proportion in Stata? Well, I'll just go down here and remember here's, if we look at our variables window, remember we're looking at um, whether the patient died on the study, that's this variable here, death censored, death C-E-N-S, and so those patients that died on the study have a value of 1, and the patients who didn't die on the study have a value of 0, okay? And then the variable called sex down here is the one that encodes the patient's gender or sex, okay? All right. So now that we know the variable names that we're working with, we can go down here into the command window and type in the command PR test, which is the test for proportion. And then I'm going to type in the outcome variable, which is death, C-E-N-S, comma, by, parentheses, and here I type in um, sex to tell it that I want to look at the probability or the proportion that died on the study differentiated by gender. And I'll hit enter. Okay? And so here is the output here. So several things to notice um, from the output. Okay? Uh, the first thing is that the output presents the sample proportions in each group. So here are males and you can see the, the mean is 0 0.06, um, 0 0.06. So what does that mean? That means that 6% of the men in the study um, died while the study was going on. And then for females, it looks like 5.5% of them died on the study. Okay. And so interestingly and very helpfully, um, Stata gives 95% confidence intervals for those numbers. So um, our estimate of the proportion of men that died on the study was 6%. The 95% confidence interval goes from 2.7% to 9.3%. Okay? And similarly for women, the 95% confidence interval for the proportion that died on the study goes from 3.4% to 7.6%. Okay? So already we should be able to tell whether we're going to reject or fail to reject our null hypothesis, right? Because we can take a look at these confidence intervals and see whether or not they overlap. If they overlap, we know we're going to fail to reject and conclude that based on our sample, there's no statistically significant difference between the groups. And these two confidence intervals clearly overlap. But no need to, um, to get ahead of ourselves. There's other ways that we can, um, other parts of the output that we can look at to reach the same conclusion. Okay. All right. Um, so then under there we have the difference. So Stata gives us the difference. It looks like it took uh, males minus females, and you can see that um, there's very little difference between the two groups. Right? We're talking about 0.4 percent. 0.004 corresponds to 0.4 percent difference. Uh, and that makes sense, right? Because 6% of, of men died and 5.5% of women died, so the difference is 0.048%, okay? And then the 95% confidence interval for the difference is here. Um, and you can see that this 95% confidence interval contains, the 95% confidence interval for the difference in proportions contains the value of zero. And that tells us that there's no significant difference between the two. If the 95% confidence interval for the difference does not contain zero, that tells us that one group or the other had more people dying um, and that the, the difference is statistically significant. But here, since we have a 95% confidence interval which contains the value of zero, um, we know that there's no difference. Okay. And then finally, we can come to the actual p-value, which is down here. Remember, the middle part gives the two-sided p-value, which is what we always focus on. I know this is the two-sided p-value because here it says the alternative hypothesis is that the difference is not equal to zero. Remember, this exclamation point is Stata's way of saying not. 
Okay, so the alternative hypothesis here is that the difference is not equal to zero. And then on the left and the right are the two one-sided um, p-values, okay? So again, we usually focus on the two-sided p-value, and it looks like the two-sided p-value in this case is 0 0.805, okay? Much, much larger than, um, than 0 0.05, which is the value that we compare to, okay? Okay, so now given this information, we can complete our hypothesis test, right? Um, so let's go back. I'm going to flip between these two screens uh, so we can finish our hypothesis test, okay? So we're on step four, which is to state the summary statistics if possible, okay? So the summary statistic here is uh, the probability of death. I'm going to change it to be consistent with what Stata did. It looks like Stata took males minus females, okay? So the probability of death in males um, remember I put the hat because that's what we found uh, minus the proportion that died among the females and in this particular example it was equal to uh, this number here 0 0.0048 okay so that's our summary statistic okay and then in step 5 we want the p-value that corresponds with this two sample test for proportions, and we said the p-value was here, um, so the p-value is 0 0.8050, which I've now written here, okay, that's our p-value, okay, and then in step 6, we say that since 0 0.8050 is much greater than 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So finally, in step seven, we reach our conclusion. Um, we say that based on our sample, Uh, there is no statistically significant statistically significant difference um, between the proportion of men and women who died on the study. Okay? This makes sense, right? This conclusion makes sense because um, there's no reason for us to believe that there should be a difference between the proportion of men and women who died on the study. And so the fact that we failed to reject and in fact that we found such a small difference in the proportion who died um, is actually makes a lot of sense and is reassuring okay so that that kind of completes our hypothesis testing so again um, just like we always do um, after seeing the commands we want to think about how could we carry this test out if we didn't know the commands and we wanted to use the drop-down menus okay so how would we do that well, we would go to um, statistics, summaries, tables, and tests, classical tests of hypotheses, and then um, the two group proportion test.
the two group proportion test. Okay, statistics, summaries, tables, and tests, classical test of hypotheses, and then the two group proportion test. Okay, so if we click on that, we're presented with this little um, menu where we have to uh, provide the variable name. Here it's going to be death sensor, and the grouping variable name is um, sex to differentiate men from women and then we'll hit OK and you can see we get the exact same output that we got by typing in the commands okay um, so that's a, a brief illustration of how we might um, conduct a two sample test of proportions using Stata okay so uh, this is a brief lecture uh, brief Stata tutorial Hopefully it'll make up for some of the long lectures that we've had um, in the past. Okay, so I will stop there and I will see you in the next lecture.